we need to let our black brothers know um, that yo, this isn't the only life, you know, like holding, taking someone's life, <laughs> it's not the way forward because you impact so many people. Mm. <laughs>
So I'm like, nah. Already these lot don't seem like they want to get to the bottom of this. You, you can't I mean? break bad news like that. Like, you know? So, yeah, that's basically the beginning of the, of the story, man. Um, okay. You got stabbed and it's a long process of yeah. trying to work out what happened. Yeah, what happened sort of following that day? Yeah, so like following that day, obviously now we're all trying to find out what happened. Yeah. So, it turns out the story is, without going into too much detail because of all the court stuff, but... Um, mm -hmm. So there's five people in the room, including my brother, four other people. And one of those people stabbed my brother. Yeah. So it was one of his friends? One of, so, I wouldn't say friends, but someone he was known to. So there were friends in that room. Right. I think I would say two of them were his friends. Okay. The other two were just like acquaintances. And um, so, one of them has done the thing, but it's like, no one's talking. Oh, Do you know what I'm okay. saying? And that's, what, that's where this whole, you know, like, no snitching culture comes in. Mm. And coming from, like, where we come from, growing up I did abide by that rule you know what I mean like you grow up in ends and you know that yo if you get caught you just take your L like you don't snitch on your people but it was it's very much paradox where I'm not in a situation where I want justice for my brother so you need someone to talk and I need someone to snitch mm -hmm. so it was a very difficult time for me because I know everyone like the way people see it they're like oh civilians like don't need to be getting up caught in that but when you've grown up in a process like that it's hard to kind of separate from it because you almost you almost understand why they're not snitching yeah. but at the same time you're like no i need justice yeah, you know yeah. so i've kind of changed my views in the whole no snitching stance i believe that if you are party to information that can help a family you know get justice and relieve themselves of that pain that you, it's your duty to do to that yeah. yeah but unfortunately yeah we 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 don't know who did it or oh, we, we know who did it, but there's no way we ain't received justice on that part, unfortunately. It's just a very, very difficult time. Yeah. And so basically, mm. the person who killed your brother is still walking. Yeah, it's still out there mm -hmm. walking, walking the earth, mm -hmm. unfortunately. It's difficult to know that because, number one, obviously, you don't know if they're a danger to anybody else, but more to the fact that you know you didn't get justice. Yeah. But then also, it's, it's mad because when the police came and the first thing they said was, you know, Oh, we know black people don't like the police and oh, someone here must know who did it. I think I let go of justice at that point. Really? Yeah, because I felt like, yeah, these lot are not here so to help us. Them. They're just trying to meet quotas or, you know, when there's a murder on your turf, you need to solve it to keep, give the community uh, a, a sense that you're protecting them. Yeah, but they're not really make there. Yeah, good. make exactly. Make themselves Rather look good, helping not helping you. us. Yeah. So a part of me feels like I'm happy that God will deliver the justice. Yeah. You know, yeah. because the way it's set up in this country anyway, mm. you're never going to get a whole life sentence. You probably do 20, 25 years and then you're going to be out on the streets yeah. again. So is my pain just going to be put on a, sh a shelf for years? And then when I'm however old, my mind comes out and then I just relive the pain again. No, it, do you know what I mean, so I don't feel like you'll ever get true justice. I think justice is for God. So yeah. part of me has kind of made peace with that. That That's the situation. So. Yeah. Yeah, it's sad. Yes, bless you. So, how do you feel as though the whole situation sort of affected you in terms of how did you cope with it? Did it have an impact on you, like mentally, or yeah. emotionally? It must have. One of the people that were in the room was a really good friend of his, and it's someone that I knew. As I watched them grow up together. Yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. And unfortunately, after the situation happened, he committed suicide. Um, really? Yeah, and it was very sad because obviously the situation must have pushed him to that point. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. To the point where maybe he felt like either he didn't do enough or maybe he couldn't snitch maybe and that was eating at him. I don't know whatever reason. Oh, wow. That really messed me up yeah. because I watched them grow up together. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I know that these were good guys, you know, that weren't really about that life or whatever. So. To now see that they're both gone, mm -hmm. both having children, you know, just left them fatherless. That really messed up, messed me up. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people that might know me know that I'm a, I'm a happy guy. I'm a people's person. You always see me at your gathering events, yeah. life at the party. That's what, that's what I know about you. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. I, I, I love that. I love being that person. But yeah. after that situation, I just became withdrawn. You know, I came withdrawn. I didn't want to be on this earth no more. I ain't gonna lie, cause my brother was everything to me. Mm -hmm. And I just felt like 
I know for a fact that when I get married, when I have children, when I when I start my business, any like positive thing that's gonna happen in my life, he's no longer gonna be there. So what's the point? Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like that's how it felt. I proper felt like a parent losing a child. Yeah. So I became withdrawn, and it was mad because as a young black man, especially growing up Ugandan, depression, mental health doesn't exist in our culture. So yeah. I've got aunties that have lost siblings. You know. Uh, uh, my dad's lost siblings, mm. so to them, they've they've done it and they've gone through it. it yeah. So how can I go to my dad now and say I'm I'm depressed? Struggling, you know. Yeah. Um, so you have this notion, and especially now, so that's the African way. And then when you look at it as being a young black man, there's this masculine gold standard. You feel like you've got to aspire to. Mm. You're not allowed to show emotion. You have to always show that you're it's you know strong. you're strong you and can't everything. Cry. You can't cry. Yeah. You can't show emotion. Yeah. I tell you, we had to go and um, identify his body. And I went there with a few of my siblings and aunties and uncles and everybody was crying about me. Why? Because I felt like I had to hold it together for everyone. I was the one that, I remember my dad, you know, bust, and I've never seen my dad cry. My dad was in the Ugandan army, do you know what I mean? Uh, and strong man, as you can to hear, hear the sense of the word, being in the army, but he was crying on my shoulder. And I felt like I had to be there for everybody else. That's the kind of guy I am, right? So going through that, knowing that there's pressures of the stereotype that we have, black men have got to be strong and not show emotion. Then also I've got the way I grew up, the Ugandan culture, I can't go and admit that I'm struggling. It was hard. It was really hard for me. And I think, you know, when, when someone passes away to, to a murder, you get a, a homicide support service or whatever. Okay. And they like check up on you and stuff to make sure, you know, and tell you about the court case and everything. Yeah, the woman was just like, I think you need to see someone because you are not doing well. Mm -hmm. I, I put it off for a long time, but then I think it's when I started having thoughts of not wanting to be on this earth no more, mm -hmm. that I was like, do you know what? Before I even get to that stage, let me be able to say I've done whatever I could. Mm -hmm. That's when I was referred to a, a, a therapist, you know? And I'm telling you, it really helped. And guys, I am someone that is prideful. I've got my ego, I've got all those things. I don't want to admit, you know, when I'm upset and stuff. But yeah. I think sometimes it takes a man, a big man, to admit that, yo, I need help. Yeah. And I needed it at that time, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. So I became withdrawn, and I know a lot of people might have realized that I came on social media and all those things. I, I just, I was guilty. I felt guilty having fun. How am I on Instagram liking pictures when my brother's gone? Yeah. How am I going out when my brother's gone? So I just became withdrawn. Mm -hmm. And the therapy really helped me because, you know, this is weird, but I've got a fear of tables now. Mind you? I've got a fear of tables. Like a table? No, it can't be like this, it has to be straight. Because in my head, whenever I see a table straight, I put my brother on it. Because that's the last time I saw him. Do you get it? Yeah. On this straight table. You know like CSI? Yes. I don't know. I'm my cousin, my grand your brother, the program. Yeah, no, I know. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, they, I did, that's how it was. So now, whenever I see a table, and it has to be like high up, I just put my brother on it. And I never realised how much that moment messed with my head until I went to therapy, mm -hmm. you know, so I was diagnosed like yeah, with depression, anxiety, I had insomnia, you know, I couldn't sleep because whenever I slept, I would see pictures of his body and stuff, mm -hmm. so it really helped me. There's certain questions that a professional can ask you that your family and friends can't. Yeah. Kwang is the new one of 16. You know, I've got 15 Sibling. siblings, yeah. Oh, wow. I've got 15 siblings, wow. and you'd think that's 15 people feeling the same pain as you. You should yeah. be able to support each other, yeah. but it doesn't work like that because we all grieved in different ways. Mm -hmm. We all had different relationships with him. Mm -hmm. So it needed that person that was from the outside to ask those leading it's questions, yeah, yeah, and help me out. So yeah. now, therapy really, really, it brought me back, to be honest, okay. because I felt guilty for a long time, mm -hmm. and I felt like I couldn't enjoy my life if he's not here no more. But what therapy helped me do is reverse it in that kind of tell you well, nah, he wouldn't want you living a life of misery. Yeah. If anything, he'd want you to live your life to the fullest and be happy. in his memory and be yeah. happy. So True. as you can see, good day can get it. <laughs> and yeah. he's back. I, I'm back, I'm here. Back. You know, so yeah. When you were going through that situation of mental health, it's like you struggled in knowing how to deal with it yeah 100 where to go who to speak to just because mental health is not something that's really recognized it's just a problem in our community it's a very big problem and stigma and stuff like exactly that. exactly but i think one thing people need to realize is that we all actually have mental health issues like whether you recognize it or not 
for you it was um you were like grieving and yeah gone through a traumatic experience but in life life i feel like poses with so many struggles that we do all end up with mental health issues one 100%. way or another so yeah. for me it's not something you consciously think about but at the back of your head you're thinking like what my boys think like what will people think to yeah. find out that I've got a mental health issue. Yeah. Well, to me, it's not even a mental. It's not even an issue. Like I'm legit depressed. <laughs> like it's not an issue. It's, this is just how my reaction yeah. to what's happened. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And what my therapist did, they referred me to a support group. Mm -hmm. So I went to a support group with other people who have been victims of knife crime yeah. and murders. Yeah. And I when you to when I talk, I it was all women. They were happy to see me. They're like, oh, we've got a, a nice. Yeah. They said handsome black man. I don't know if I'm handsome. <laughs> they said, "Oh, we've got like like a nice handsome black man here." Yeah. You know, like for the first time. And they were asking, "Why do men not come for these things?" I'm like, do "You know what? I'm not gonna lie. I was referred to it like three months prior, and I just kept putting it off, kept putting it off, until um, I think my dad got wind of it. I was like, just go. And I'm like, men just don't believe. Like, I feel, we feel almost embarrassed being here. I was nervous mm, getting there. To go. Can't go all there. When I went there, I think that session is what really brought me back mm. because there's this one lady and I've spoken about her on my own podcast so forgive me if you've watched it already and I'm repeating myself but there's this one lady Van B that her son got murdered he went out to a party 18 years old never came home got oh. stabbed at the party passed away and she had immigrated from France but I've been originally there from like Ivory Coast mm. by herself just yin and one away mm. do you know what I mean this is the only family she had in this country and he passed away she had to go and view the body by herself yeah she had to go through all that court process everything by uh, herself yeah. and I it, like i told you i've got 15 siblings yeah. i've got a big family yeah. i had all the support and the woman was strong you know what i mean mm -hmm. and when they were going around in a circle like oh tell everyone your story because mm -hmm. you know what i mean i just felt this woman can do this yeah by herself yeah why am i here why am i complaining i've got all the support in the world and that really made me appreciative of the support that I had because mm -hmm. she'd said to me, you went on, you know what, see that TV, see that the radio, just now, you know what, you try and stop in there, like, I didn't even know that I was going to be one and that just proper, it touched me, yeah. do you know what I mean, and yeah. it's just like, no, I need to be stronger for this woman, you know what I mean, for all the other people that have been impacted, and I think my, one of my biggest inspirations was Doreen Lawrence, you know, Stephen Lawrence's mum, yeah. Her son who died of, um, she got murdered, he got murdered by racists in Elton like in 90, yeah. I think it was 94. Yeah, it was And how long she had to fight for justice. So, yeah, it really helps and I think what I'm trying to tell my black brothers, but even sisters that struggle with mental health is, please, don't suffer alone. No one's going to judge you. So don't have that stigma of, oh, what people think of me. Forget what people think of you. Think of your mental health. You know, a lot of people forget. One life, you know. You forget something that I don't know. People think, oh, you're guaranteed to live till 90, and maybe there's an afterlife. Oh, no, no. One life. Yeah. Even if there's an afterlife, there's no guarantee you're going to be Jan. Miss Uganda. <laughs> former Miss Uganda. <laughs> you might come back as an ant or something. <laughs> or a tree. <laughs> or a tree. You don't know. So enjoy this one life you have as Jan. Mm. When you have your issues, reach out. When you're going through whatever you're going through and you need help, it's important for you to reach out. Exactly. You've had it here first. Therapy, support groups, even family, people around you, get help. Get help, man. It's so important. And I promise you, my dad would say it all the, t all the time, there's nothing new under the sun. Mm, right? Any problem true. you have, someone so, else has it. Yeah. So it's it not like you're going to come and tell me, Jan, I'm going through something. <gasps> like, no, I'm not going to be shocked because <laughs> nine times out of ten, see what I saw said, yeah. this, you won't be the last, you know? <laughs>
out, we need to let our black brothers know um, that yo, this isn't the only life, you know, like hold it, taking someone's life, <laughs> it's not the way forward because you impact so many people. Mm. So you'll be happy for that one day, two days that you've got rid, got rid of your op. But for us that are on the other side, That's the it's a lifetime of pain. Yeah, the whole family is broken. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's almost like we're giving in to the systematic racism that they want us to do. They want us to kill each other. They want us to get rid of each other. That's the thing. So. Behave your normal now, again, you guys. Yeah. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for having me again on this yeah. channel. I'll keep thanking you to Kingdom Come. But we hope that even if one person, for me personally, what I want out of this video, mm. even if one person, especially a young black boy, said, I'm going to go and get help, I feel like I would have done my job. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, in terms of what actions people are saying, okay, like, what are you not doing about it? Just starting a conversation yeah. is a big step for me anyway. Yeah, thank you guys so much thank you. for giving us your time. Please do comment down below um, any thoughts that you have surrounding um, the issues that we have talked about today. Mm -hmm. So, that being mental health and getting help. Mm -hmm. Um, knife crime, institutionalised racism, growing up black in the UK, mm. all of that, all of that. Um, and Marvin will be available if you want to reach out to him um, oh, on indeed. his socials. And make sure you check out his podcast as well because he's a content creator. I am, I'm back. I'm Tell back in my bag. So I've got a it. podcast, it's called In My Opinion Podcast. You can follow us on Instagram, In My Opinion Podcast UK. But on YouTube, just type it In My Opinion Podcast. And yeah, we just have topics that you know we touch on serious stuff but with a bit of banter because yes, i just love banter you can see this yeah. this topic where i love my brother like the 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 the, the whole thinking about his murder is traumatic but i still like to add some light to it because that's the kind of guy he was mm -hmm. you know we never mm -hmm. never nothing was ever that serious so Manang, if you want to get more content want to see more about me please follow the podcast and watch it on youtube man yep so check out his content it's going to be down below in the description um, hit him up on socials if there's any part of history that you feel like um, you can connect with or if you'd like some advice from him if you feel like um, yeah, I'm yeah open. something that he can help you anyone with. that wants to drop in DMs they want help especially demand them uh, you want to know what counsellors you can go to or therapist or whatever mm -hmm. even if you might not be able to afford it there's a lot of black charities that give free counselling so yeah please hit me up in the DMs man I'm willing to help and thank you again our forever Michiganda for having me on the platform man appreciate it Senior Kale guys. Kale. Ah, cool, man. Peace.